So you've graduated from undergrad, you've taken the MCAT, you've applied to medical school in the AMCAS ACOMAS application. So it's time to look at what the rest of the application timeline looks like for secondaries, for rejections, waitlists, and the almighty acceptance. What is up and good morning, YouTube. For those of you guys that are new here, my name is Jason, now a second year med student out at GW. Crazy to say I'm a second year, but in this video, I wanna take you guys through my entire application timeline. So from graduating undergrad to the MCAT, to then applying, and then most importantly, I wanna show you guys what happens after that with secondaries, and then hearing all the news, whether it be rejections, waitlist or the almighty acceptance. So let's get right into it. Don't want to cut any of your time, but before we really jump into it, please be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that post notification bell because that's really what helps the channel grow. So let's get into the actual video here. So I went to California Lutheran University, a small liberal arts school out in California. Um, I graduated with my BS in biology in 2019. Um, I actually graduated a semester early, so I was the class of 2019, but graduated in 2018. Uh, so 2019, there I am graduating photos with family. Love that. All right, so let's start off with the MCAT. Uh, we're just going to jump into my actual application, my AMCAS application, because that just gives us better information. So this is the first reporting page. Let's just scroll past. Um, I want to jump down to the actual MCAT so that way you guys can see that. Um, but if you guys are interested in seeing my full application, I am more than happy to make a full new video. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys are interested. So um, let's take a look here. So I took the MCAT twice, as you guys can see here. I took it in March of 2019 and then June of 2020. Um, March 2019, as you guys can see here, it scored a 506, um, broken down 127, 126, 124, and 129. So as you guys can see there, um, I really should not have taken the MCAT when I did. Um, I kept scoring around 505, 506. I wasn't entirely ready for it. Um, but overall, my breakdown was good, except for I tanked the bio and biochem section. I don't know what happened just was not my day. So I had to retake it because, you know, coming in at a 124 is not really something that I was scoring before and I knew I could do a lot better. So with that, we jump up and we take a full year to break. And as you guys know, the big C word had come about and ruined everyone's MCAT plan tests. So I had to push it back into June. So June of 2020, I retook the MCAT. Um, and this time I guess, you guys can see here, scored a 512, which was ranked as the 85th percentile um, at breaking down is 128, 126, 128, and 130. So slight improvement in chem and physics. Uh, cars stayed the same, honestly was okay with that. Um, and then bio and biochem, huge jump up, four points was very important for me to get into where I got into. Um, and then from there, my psych social went up another point as well. So overall, six point improvement in over a year. And during this time, I was working full time. If you guys are interested in seeing my MCAT study plan, I will leave it linked down in the description below so that you guys can check it out. Um, I have a full study plan in Excel. You guys can adjust it as you like. So this was me working full time. So let's jump back up to the top of this application because there are some important things I want to show you guys. So the date that I had submitted was 529 of 2020. Now, as you guys can see here, I took the MCAT in end of June, but had applied end of May. So why did I do this? I did this because I want to be on and verified right away so I don't lose any time in the verification process. Because the later you are to apply, the later you are to get verified. So initially, as you guys can see here, from 529, it was submitted, and then it was processed in 06 of 12. So that gives us roughly about two weeks or so to get verified from the initial starting submitting date. However, if I had waited until I was actually taking the MCAT to then apply, I could have waited up to six, maybe even eight weeks to get verified, which pushes back secondaries, which pushes back interviews and just not ideal. So 
I was able to do this and I was in a lucky situation because I had one MCAT score already in. So because of that, I just applied to GW, which was my dream school. I just threw in the application and then from there, I waited to see what my MCAT score was going to be before I filled out and applied to all the other schools. So if you guys have any questions about how did I choose my school list and where did it all come from, I can make a video on that. So that way you guys can kind of figure out what are some important things you should look out for when applying to med school because you could easily apply to all of them, but at that point, you're just wasting your money and we can't do that as met students. So we've gone over graduation, we've gone over the MCAT, we've gone over the submission of my AMCAS application. So once you already have your primary in, the secondaries, they just start rolling in. So let's get into the secondaries and show you guys the beautiful Excel tracker that I made that I will leave down in the description below for you guys to also use. All right, so as you guys can see here, this is my beautiful color coordinated, amazing Excel tracker. Honestly, probably one of the highlights of the whole secondary process because I hate, hate, hate writing. So I just came up with this tracker. So I had to make sure that everything was on time. So quickly, just to run through it so that way you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Um, and the first column, I just have it numbered based on one through 26 schools that I applied to, then threw in the school name. Now, super important here is um, I have it hidden, um, just so that way you guys, for my own privacy reasons, but here I have the link to the school, and then the next two columns are my username and password. It kept it in all one organized place, so that way if anything ever came up, I had the right place to go to. Then um, we go through the cost. This is the cost of the secondaries, which adds up super quick. Um, if you guys are interested to see how much med school costs to apply, again, I will leave it down in the link below, just so that way you guys are prepared, that way you guys can save up properly. Um, and then here in this next status, we have the status of what happened with all of my applications. Um, we'll kind of go through it fairly quickly. Um, I'll jump back to that. But then we have the, so this is the more important part, the date that I received my secondary, and then I had the date to be completed. So this one, as you guys can see up here, all I did was I had the date received, added two weeks, and that was the date to be completed. Um, so that way I was on top of it and had to know how much time I really had. So two weeks is really the goal. Um, beyond that, you know, three, maybe four weeks is pushing it. But again, try to get everything in, in two weeks. Um, and from there, I applied. So in the column next to it, I just had the days left. How many days did I have left to finish out this um, secondary? Then I put the date submitted. So once it was submitted, um, this column then changed to the actual submitted little blue icon here. Um, so there was one school that I applied to, but never filled out the secondary. So at the bottom here, you guys can see that it still states in progress um, and I'd have no dates here. So I decided not to fully go through with the Loma Linda application. Um, so we scroll back to the top. Um, the date submitted, the date completed. The date completed is when I got an email verification from the school stating that they had everything. So the big three that they're looking for there are your transcripts, your actual secondary, and all of your letters of rec. Once they have all of that, then it's considered completed. Not every school will put out an email. Uh, it's on to you to jump into the portal to make sure that you have everything set there. Um, the next column I have is the interview invite date. So what date did they get the interview invite? And then the acceptance date, rejection date, follow-up email sent as far as rejections or waitlists. Um, and then this last column is the waitlist date. So this column down at the end is just extra info, whatever else I needed to put there. So again, I will share this Excel file with you guys down the bottom. Um, please be sure to download it so that we have your own individual copy um, and you can adjust it from there. But I will try my best to ensure that all the formulas stay there so that way you guys can utilize them. So what is the rest of the timeline goes? As you guys can see here in the date received, these are all in about July to August, even September was the latest I was getting secondaries. Um, so during July is really just writing. With that being said, if you've already submitted your application, your primary in June, start pre-writing. Um, you have Med School HQ, which has all of the historical secondary questions which students have submitted to them they have it all organized based on the school a lot of questions overlap so get on that and get on that early just because it takes time to write it all out um so in july you start getting it uh with that through july um and then we just get our interviews so out of the 26 
med schools that I applied to, I had three interview invites. So let's just filter them down to the interviews. And as you guys can see here, I interviewed at GW, Georgetown, and UCI. Um, kind of interesting in the fact that I had the two DC schools and my one California school, nowhere else wanted to have me in for an interview. But it is what it is, and that's the name of the med school application game. It really doesn't make sense. So I think that I had a very unique experience when it came to applying to medical school. Um, I got my acceptance in October, which is almost unheard of. Um, I don't know why it happened the way it did. I don't, don't know. But with all that crazy experience, I'm so grateful for all of it. Um, so again, I had my interview in in September, October, I'm accepted to med school. And with that, just a weight off my shoulders. There was no real way to describe it. I think that was the last time that I just dropped to my knees and, and just cried. I called family and it was one of the greatest moments that I've had in my entire life. And I'm so grateful to now have been at GW with the friends that I've made, classmates, the opportunities that I've been given. So I'm very excited for what the future holds. Um, now on to year two, which is great. I uh, got to get through the last of the pre clinicals and then we're off into the hospital, which let's just say I'm counting down the days to go on to rotations. Um, so again, so that's the start. I had another interview at Georgetown in November. Um, unfortunately, it was rejected then in March. So one of the issues that I had is that it took a long time to hear back from them. Um, I'm not sure what caused that, but again, out of my hands and out of my control. Uh, and then last interview was at UCI in January um, and then was placed on their wait list in February, a few weeks later. So in May of 2021, I accepted my acceptance to GW and have now been living it up here. Um, I am so grateful for the opportunities that I have, so grateful for all that has kind of come from this amazing experience. And so with that, quick little video on my whole application timeline. So with all that being said, I created a second tab to just kind of formulate and show everything that I had. I did apply to five DO schools that I didn't have listed in my tracker. Um, but as you guys can see here, I summed up how much it really costs to apply to everything. Showed the interview invites to attendings, the rejections, and then my total cycle. How did it go uh, for 2020 to 2021? So Again, I applied to 26 MD, 5 DO, so that puts it at 31 medical schools in the United States, three interviews, one acceptance, and that's all you really need. You just need that one acceptance, and that puts you on the journey to become a doctor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys can take some insight into how the timeline goes for once you've done all the secondaries, because it's really just a waiting game for the interviews. So if you guys have any questions about how this application cycle goes or any insight or want me to review secondaries, want me to help out with interview prep, send me a message on Instagram. That's the best way for me to contact you. Again, my services are free. You guys don't need to pay for it. You paid enough to apply to medical school. So I paid for the total four thousand and six hundred dollars which is nuts that's just to apply so i don't need to charge you a penny more you guys send me a message on instagram and i'm happy to help out with filling out secondaries filling out and preparing for your interviews so that way you guys show up and get that beautiful acceptance but that's going to be it for me hope you guys enjoyed this video please please share it with family please share it with friends because we are helping this channel grow and I can't help it grow without all of you guys and all of your amazing support that I've been having so far. So wrap it up here. Please be sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what questions you have for the application cycle, application timeline, anything med school related in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one as we embark on the journey of MD in the making. Peace. <laughs>